Okay, guys, um, this is the intro to Excel. Just uh, recording this so you guys, in case you miss class or whatnot, um, you can watch in. Maybe you want to freshen up on some stuff. Okay, so the, the main thing with Excel um, is primarily used as a spreadsheet for budgetary purposes, data analysis, mathematical formulas, etc. Right? There's a variety of things you can do with Excel. And it's actually pretty neat once you learn how to use it. So we'll just get started. Um, Excel is definitely beneficial for small businesses as well as for large corporations. When I worked at Target, we used uh, almost every single report that we got was um, was through Excel. So we we're able to like analyze the data and whatnot. And I'm sure it's the same with a lot of smaller businesses as well that do their own information, uh, even nonprofits. So um, the we're going to start off with just kind of the general setup of Excel. Okay, so first off, this area that I'm running my mouse over is called the ribbon. Okay, so that's just kind of the general term of the ribbon. Uh, pretend that it's attached to the head, which would be these two different tabs, right? Um, we also have tabs, which is what I just mentioned, right? So we have file tab, home tab, enter tab, page layout tab, etc. Right, so in an assignment, it might tell you to go to the page layout tab, right? So you'd click on the page layout tab, and then you'd go and find the different group that it's asking for. So that's our next point, right, is these groups. So a group, um, you can see it's divided by these lines right here, and it will tell you the name of the group, OK? Um, we also have what's called the dialog box launcher, OK? So when we click on this little doohickey right here, it will pull up a another box that we gives us a little bit more options okay so that's a dialog box launcher okay so for instance if i say go to the home tab and then the alignment dialog box launcher i'd go and look clipboard font alignment there's that and then dialog box launcher okay so i'd click on there and that would open up the dialog box launcher okay now with excel we have some things that are voc vocab that will help you with the MOS test as well as with the state test. Okay, so first thing is what a row versus a column is. Okay, so row is going to be the one, two, three, right? It's horizontals, right? A column stands straight up. So it's going to be the letters. Okay, and then you also notice that in order for me to select the entire row or column, I need to actually click on either the number or the letter. Okay, so that's important. Okay, the next thing we have is what's a cell versus a cell range. So if it tells you to select a certain cell, it might say select cell B10. I'd go to B, the B column, go down to 10. Okay, and I'd click that and I'd make that active. Okay, so um, B10, right? And then if I wanted to edit and put text in there, I could either start typing or I can double click. Okay. Next we have, uh, or I guess the cell range is what I was also going to mention. So cell range would be for instance, let's say we're in B2, right? And then you have the colons, and let's say it wants to go down to D10. Okay, so that would that shows that it is a cell range. You have the colons there. Okay, so then if it tells you to select that range, you'd click in to the first box, right, which would be B2, and you'd go over to the column D, and then go down to 10. So right now I have the B2 to D10 range selected. Next, we have worksheets versus workbooks. Okay, so the best way to look at this is a the book is going to be the entire document, and you can have multiple sheets. Almost look at it like they're pages on Word, right? You have multiple sheets that I can have in a book. And then the sheets, you see down here, right now I only have one sheet, but if I click the Add button, adds another sheet, I can add as many sheets as I want. And then if I wanted to rename those, right click, and I can actually rename. I can also change the tab color. Okay, so a lot of places will do that. So that way, it maybe it's easier to color coordinate. So you know that maybe my blue sheet is a certain month. Maybe my orange sheet is another month. Okay, and then next what we can do is we can actually format these rows and columns. Okay, so let's go back to sheet one. So let's say I'm typing something, right? Like, I love Mondays so much. And then I have something else typed here. 
but Fridays are even better. Okay, so right now it blocks out what's in my column A. So if I want to adjust that, I have a couple different options. The, easy, the easiest is selecting the little line in between A and B. If, when I hover over that, I get this symbol. I can click and drag, okay? Click and drag to whatever size I need. Or if I double click that line, it will auto adjust to the whatever is the longest text in that column, okay? So that double click. The other option that I have is if I go up here to the Home tab, go over to the Cells group, click that Format dropdown, I have this Auto Fit Column Width, okay? All right, and then next thing we are going to look at is how to do formulas in Excel. Okay, so let's go ahead and delete both these, get that back to normal. Okay, so if I want to do a formula, I have a couple of different options. First off, if I want to create my own formula, I need to let Excel know that I'm going to do a formula. And so we do that with a call sign. Okay, and that call sign is just equals. When I do equals, now Excel knows that I'm going to do a formula. Okay, so let's actually get some numbers up in here. So we'll just do some random numbers. Okay, so let's say I'm trying to sum this up, right? So my first option, I can hit equals, right? Because I got to do the call sign. And then I can actually select which cells the formula is going to be used on. Okay, so for instance, let's say I want to add them all together. I would just click on the cell that I want to add. I have to manually type in the plus, and then I can go through and do that. That's beneficial if you're doing some complex formulas, right? So if I'm doing like a profit formula or, or something, and I need to maybe times and multiply and divide, right, I can actually create that formula manually. And then when I double click back in that box, it's gonna show me that formula. Okay, so that's the first option. Second option, I still would need to do the call sign, which is equals, but then I can actually type in the formula I want. So let's say I wanna find the average. Let's see if there's a formula for that. Oh, look, there is. So let's go ahead and double click on average. And now I, it's asking me, it's basically saying, what do you want to average out? And so this is where I would just click and drag the numbers that I want to find the average of. Okay, so now I have selected the numbers that I want to find the average for. And then I can just go ahead and, and hit, oh, there we go. I can go ahead and hit enter. And there it is, there's the average. And you can see right now when you click in there, you have this name box, the formula bar, and it will show you what formula you're using. Okay, but then it actually populates the number right there. Last option, it's also very easy, right? So you click in the box that you want the formula to appear in, and I can actually go to the Home tab over here to the Editing group, and I have this Auto Sum button. Click the drop down, and now I have some of the more commonly used functions. Okay, or kind of the same thing, but we go over to the formula tab, and I can also look up at all these different formulas. But again, most of the most commonly used ones you can just find on the home tab in the editing group. And then let's say I want to count numbers. I want it to count the numbers. It's auto going to select whatever's above that. I can hit enter, and there are five numbers. Okay, so that is how you do formulas. Okay, so um, that should be it for this recording. Uh, hopefully that answered some of your basic questions and kind of teaches you a little bit about the formulas in, in Excel.